The election continued to dominate the news cycles this week. Vote counting is ongoing in many states. President Trump and his legal team continue to challenge the election results in several states, including Pennsylvania. However, many of these challenges have not progressed and most agree that Vice President Biden will become the 46th president of the United States. The two Senate races in Georgia will determine the balance of power in Washington, DC. As of today, Republicans hold the majority in the Senate with a count of 52 to 48. If Democrats pick up both seats in Georgia, the count will be 50-50, with Vice President-elect Kamala Harris as the tie-breaking vote. Republicans may pick up a handful of seats in the House of Representatives, making this one of the most closely divided Congresses in history. At the state level, except for Vice President Biden's apparent win, Republicans fared well in the election, picking up two out of three statewide offices, Treasurer and Auditor General. It is fair to say this is a powerful message in the statewide offices in Pennsylvania rarely are captured by Republicans. Additionally, it looks like Republicans will pick up three seats in the state house and handily hold the Senate. One of the three seats lost in the house was that of minority leader Frank Dermody, a vocal opponent of House Bill 2513. The House and Senate returned to session this week for leadership elections. In a first, two women will make Pennsylvania political history. Senator Kim Ward, Republican from Westmoreland, and Representative Joanna McClintock, Democrat from Philadelphia, were elected to serve as floor leaders of their respective parties for the upcoming legislative session. Pundits will try to explain why the anticipated Pennsylvania blue wave did not materialize. I cannot help but believe that some of it has to do with the governor's handling of the COVID crisis particularly the unfair and unsubstantiated targeting of the restaurant industry. Most people understand that many decisions have been trial and error because navigating a pandemic is all new to everyone. But the devastating impact of this guesswork on the 700,000 employees in the hospitality industry cannot be overemphasized. In several press conferences of late, Secretary of Health Levine said there are no plans for further mitigation. We remain cautiously optimistic this will be the case. Perhaps Governor Wolf and Secretary Levine realized that the previous mitigation of our industry did not help, and in fact may have exacerbated the coronavirus spread by pushing events into unsupervised and less safe home venues versus licensed hotels, restaurants, and catering facilities operated by trained professionals. However, COVID cases are surging across the country and around the world. Additional mitigation has taken place in many states, including our neighbors in New York and New Jersey, and total lockdowns have happened in other countries. It remains to be seen how Pennsylvania will respond, but one thing is clear. We know a lot more about the virus than we did when the first lockdown was attempted. Pfizer's vaccine announcement earlier this week offers new hope, pending peer review and further analysis of the results. Should the vaccine be a successful candidate in the fight against the virus, getting it into the arms of Americans will provide to be a challenge. We anticipated a long, hard winter, and I'm afraid that's what we face. PRLA held its semi-annual board meeting and annual meeting of membership on Monday. Among other things, the board approved PRLA's 2021 budget. Like you, we anticipate a tough year, but our team continues to work hard to provide the services the industry needs and maintain the long-term viability of the association. PRLA membership elected the 2021 slate of returning and new directors. Congratulations to new directors, Michael Rivkin of the Dolan House Bed and Breakfast and Susan Dale from Spinner's Town Hotel. Michael will take over from retiring director, Dee Fagan. Thank you, Dee, for your long and impactful service to the PRLA and our industry. Dee is quick to point out that she's not retiring from her bed and breakfast but just from her directorship at PRLA. Congratulations to Cynthia Smith of Haas's Family Steak and Sea Restaurants and Marzoni's Brick Oven and Brewing Company on her election as PRLA's state treasurer. It is because of folks like Dee, Michael, Susan, and Cynthia, as well as the other board members and chapter board members around the state that PRLA is one of the most highly recognized state hospitality associations in the nation. Thanks to all of you for staying strong in these difficult times. 
we will continue to do our best to help in every way that we can. I'm John Longstreet with another edition of It Happened This Week. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you again next week.